Hello, I am Nanoside, and today I'm in Valheim, where I'm going to show you how to create a simple, very useful and powerful 3x3 building. The 3x3 comes from the 2x2 wood floor panel size, where they are laid out in a 3x3 panel method. So realistically, this is a 6x6 building, but we're just going to ignore that little fact. For this basic build, including the inside furniture items, you will need 199 wood, 5 stone, 10 grey dwarf eyes, 2 certling cores, and 20 fine wood. If you do the same build with the alternative roof style, you will need 202 wood. I recommend having a little extra as it can just make the build go a whole lot smoother. First, you will need to find a suitable area, something that is fairly flat or can be quickly made flat. Find a spot and flatten out the train from there. Once you are satisfied and have enough space, throw down a workbench, I already have several out, and then begin laying out the 3x3 floor. While laying out the floor, you'll want to take note of where the fireplace will go. For me, I like to keep it dead center opposite of where I will place the door. At this point, I would also like to frame out the flooring for both visual aesthetics and a guide for building up the frame. Next, I'd like to place my door on the lower walls. From this point, I like to build out the overall basic framing of the structure. Before starting the roof, I prefer to finish building the back wall to help with the fireplace chimney construction for the next part. Now it is time to build the roof. If your jump skill is low or just prefer to be safe, I recommend placing some temporary ladder scaffolding as needed. Up on the roof, I prefer to use the 26 degree thatch roof components. This is more or less a personal choice as I believe for this particular design, it just looks more pleasing. For the chimney, I square it off with half walls since I'm using the 26 degree thatch roof. If I were to be using the 45 degree thatch roof, I would want to use the full height walls to square off the chimney area above the roof. Then I place 26 degree wood walls with the tallest point facing outwards to give a full wall panel height opening so smoke can escape. I then cover it with a 26 degree roof piece. If you use 45 degree roof in here, you'll also want to use 45 degree walls and a roof piece. Back on the ground, I use the appropriate degree walls to complete the roof. Then I finish up the walls and place a 45 degree wood cross above the door. This allows some light to flow into the building and gives a small window, plus it just looks aesthetically pleasing. Inside the building, I finish assembling the fireplace and I place a campfire. At this point, I place a workbench and a bed on the right side of the building. Above the workbench, I place a single floor tile and then two chests on top, creating a shelf. One could technically force a third chest onto the shelf, but it makes for a very tight squeeze when gaining access to the bed. On the opposite wall, I place a portal and another chest next to it. I add two cooking stations to the campfire and the basic building is complete. Be sure to also go outside and clean up any temporary ladders, scaffolding, or extra workbenches. Before we get any deeper into the video, if you've liked what you have seen so far, hit that like button. It really helps me out on the YouTube algorithm and gets this video in front of more gamers. I really appreciate it and thank you for your support. So let's talk about aesthetics. So here we have this basic 3x3 building. It's kind of ugly, isn't it? Well, to make it more pleasing to the eye, I like to use the roof crosses at the front and back as necessary to give the building a bit more Viking feel. In this case, since I used the 26 degree roof tiles, I will also add a 26 degree wood roof cross. If I had used the 45 degree roof tiles, I would have also used the 45 degree wood cross. Another aesthetic addition I'd like to make to most of my designs is the addition of wood beams and wood poles to give more definition to the sides of the building. Then I also add 45 degree wood beams or 45 degree wood crosses to the building's walls. I tend to create a pattern or look on the fly that looks or feels right and is generally pleasing to the eyes. For a final touch on the outside, I like to add an item stand to the center of the cross above the door. Depending on the location and what I think just looks cool, I will select a trophy and place it on the stand. In this case, I'm using a Drake Trophy. And a pro tip, a Certling Trophy can be used as a low level light source above the door too. Now inside the building, I take the wood beams and poles to add more definition to the fireplace. Sometimes I'll also use the wood roof cross as well in my fireplace design upgrade. Let's talk about comfort. The base comfort of the building's design is currently at four. That is better than nothing, but it's still close to nothing. To help the comfort levels quickly, I add a Lox, Deer, and Wolf Rug. With the three rugs placed, the comfort jumps up to seven, which is nice, but we can still do better. Using some fine wood, I add a chair for more comfort. I place it by the door and portal as it is out of the way. Then I add a banner. I tend to use black and blue banners in most of my designs. This adds one more comfort to the level, bringing it up to a total of 10, which is really nice. Another design variation, which will reduce regular wood use, is to incorporate core wood into the design. This technically gives the building some more strength as the core wood components have more durability. When using core wood, I prefer to use it as corner columns and support columns. While one can technically use the core wood as beams, there are some weird snapping issues that makes it difficult to use, and for me, it just looks off in the design. Sometimes when placing the core wood poles, you'll want to rotate them to get the best fitting look possible. 
the current roof is really simple, and I really like or prefer roofs that have a slight overhang. To add this feature is simple. All you have to do is build the appropriate thatch roof extensions on the sides. On the back side, I like to extend the roof out by one section. To handle the chimney and still allow free flow of the campfire smoke, I rotate and attach the same thatch roof piece on top of the chimney slope downward. A variation on the backside chimney exhaust can be done with the angled wood walls and half height walls as necessary with the attachment of a thatch roof. This is one of the design areas where there are lots of possible options, and I tend to design and go with whatever I feel like in the moment. For the front, I just extend the roof without any modifications. Next, I like to add the appropriate degree wood beams in alignment with the structure, creating some depth for the roof. Now that we have a lovely little outpost that looks great, has a reasonable comfort level, a place to cook some meat, a bed, and a portal, so why not add a kiln and a smelter? After all, there's a very good chance that this design will be used as an outpost and might see plenty of ore. On the back side, there's plenty of room to add a smelter and a kiln. I tend to place the smelters on the left side and then a charcoal kiln on the right side with it rotated so that the front is closer to the smelter. One of the cool things about the roof overhang is it protects items from the weather. So while the inside is a bit cramped on space, the outside could be utilized some. For example, you can add a table outside against the building for more comfort. And while we're at it, why not a Raven Throne too? Now we have a nice comfort level 14, which is fairly close to the current max comfort level in game. Now that we have this nice little outpost building, it would really suck to have some gray doors, certainly skeletons, or other nasties destroy your hard work. It's time to build a fence. So you have a few choices on fence design. There's the super cheap and totally weak one wood cost round pole fence. And then there's the four wood cost stake wall of beefiness. The choice is clear if you value your outpost. I tend to build the stake wall far enough around my building to give me some room to run around inside, but still close enough to not have a massive base footprint. Depending on the location, I will install one or two gates, sometimes even more, and almost always the first gate is near the front door of the building. To add even more security in very hostile areas, sharp stakes can be deployed. They will need to be built on the ground as they do not attach, and do note that they will cause aggro of nearby mobs. If you have access to iron or brought in two iron bars with you, you can craft a stone cutter and build some stone walls. The stone walls are really strong and you can even add the stake walls on the outside of the stone for even more protection. For base and outpost security, it really comes down to understanding the mobs, how they attack, and what types of event threats your base can potentially face. Naturally, as one progresses the game with more and more bosses defeated, it makes sense to continue upgrading the defenses of all bases and outposts that you value. However, sometimes stuff just happens so don't be surprised if a troll attack occurs and smashes up some of your place. This then will just give you an opportunity to build it back better. I found this outpost design to be very useful and a foundation for me to easily expand upon when needed. Let me know in the comments below if you use similar designs, and if you don't, tell me what you do different. I'm always looking for new ideas and suggestions and ways to do things better. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to know when the next video lands. And as always, keep on gaming.